How to respond to criticism and offensive comments. Hi, I'm Marielena Wadillo, and if this is the first time you watch one of my videos, let me welcome you to my channel. I'm a psychologist by profession and I dedicate myself to accompany people to create the life of fullness they deserve. Today we're going to talk about a super interesting topic because who hasn't been through a situation where a relative, a friend or an office mate makes your life impossible with unfavorable offensive comments, giving opinions on topics that are sensitive and perhaps with certain criticisms that are not constructive at all and are very malicious. So, I'm going to share with you some precise and forceful keys so that you can put an end to that kind of comments and so that in a very diplomatic way you will make people respect you. Before sharing the assertive and intelligent answers for you to leave these people out of debate, I'm going to share the three mistakes you should not make. First, before an offense, the worst thing you can do is to counterattack. When you react, you attack and respond to a criticism with another criticism. For example, you're a messy one, and you, you're impatient. What are you doing by putting yourself on the same level as the one who attacks you? You are following the game. If you realize this really becomes a snowball where teasing, attacks and offenses are not going to stop. So mistake number one, don't respond to an offense with another attack. Mistake number two, don't defend yourself. Have you heard the adage, he who owes nothing fears nothing? Well, apply it in your life and be very careful with this. If they are telling you that you look horrible, don't say, Oh, I didn't have time to get ready, or yes, I know, but I'm going to the hairdresser this weekend. Because what you are doing here is, number one, you agree with the one who is attacking you. Number two, you're opening a door for these kind of comments to continue to occur. So, when you defend yourself and you respond to the other person with excuses or justifications, you are simply saying, you know what? You can attack me and you can offend me whenever you want. Mistake number two, don't defend yourself. Mistake number three, don't remain silent. Have you heard the adage, silence gives consent? Well, here it applies and it applies perfectly. When you remain silent, you are not making a difference. You can think, no, I really don't give importance to these comments. I don't pay attention to them. I better ignore them. But be careful if the strategy is not working. If the first time you keep silent, but still that person continues and continues and continues to offend you and making derogatory comments, do you think that keeping quiet is going to be a tool that's going to work for you or that's going to put an end to that kind of behavior? Don't do it. If you have already seen that keeping quiet and ignoring criticisms is not being effective, don't continue doing the same. Now let's continue with the keys and strategies so that you can respond intelligently and assertively to the critics. But before doing so, I can't stop inviting you to please follow me on Instagram. If you still do not, you are missing valuable content. Every day in IG stories and in my posts, I'm sharing tips, recommendations, and clues about couples, abundance, prosperity, work. So go to Instagram and follow me if you still do not. And without further ado, let's go with the keys that I have prepared for you today. When they want to give opinions about your occupations, choices and projects. There will always be someone who, perhaps with genuine concern, wants to talk about those initiatives that you want to carry out. Probably you are planning to take a trip, go study somewhere else, undertake, change jobs, start a new academic project, and probably the person who makes the comment is doing it perhaps with a good intention, but their comment, instead of motivating you, encouraging you, and filling you with energy so that you can carry out your purpose, sabotages you. They tell you things like, are you crazy, so much money, but have you thought about it, are you sure of what you're going to do? 
And what happens is that number one, that person can be really and sincerely worried about you. Or number two, that person feels really confronted with your success, your initiative and your project because it makes them confront themselves and causes them discomfort to know that you are daring to do something that maybe they have always wanted and never achieved. Remember that what we say about others says a lot about ourselves. So, if they are giving their opinion about a choice that you already made, the best way to respond assertively is by saying something like, I greatly appreciate your concern, but right now I'm willing to stand by my decision and experience it by myself. Beyond the result, I want to live the experience firsthand. You see, it is a respectful way of letting the other know I don't know if your concern has good or bad intentions, I value it and I appreciate it. I appreciate that you are worrying about me, but right now I stand by my decision and whether it goes well or wrong, I'm willing to experience it because it's my life and my process. I will say it again in a much simpler and easier way. You can say something like, I really appreciate that you care so much for me, but right now I am determined. And when you say determined, you are saying, you know what, don't keep insisting because I'm already convinced that this is my choice. I recap. I greatly appreciate your concern. Thank you for being interested about me and my choice. But at this moment, I'm determined to live this experience beyond the consequences and I want to give myself the opportunity to experience it. When you say it the way I said it, forcefully, with conviction and certainty, there will hardly be a place for these people or this person to comment again about your project. When they question your decisions. In some moments in life you are forced to make decisions, but many people give opinions about your choices even if you haven't asked for them. Events such as choosing your professional career, continuing or not continuing in a relationship, or, or investing in a new financial project. They unleash a lot of opinions in people around you that maybe you haven't even asked for. There is a big difference between talking to someone close to you and telling them, I would like to know your point of view. But there is a huge gap between impertinent and inopportune people who arrive without your request to say, are you sure? Did you think about it? Do you think it is the best choice? What if instead you... Are you not going to regret it? So, a good way to respond to these people who are giving you their opinion without your request is... I understand your point of view and I thank you for sharing it, but I also thank you for understanding that it is my choice and above all, I thank you very much for respecting it. In this way, you're saying, hey, you're giving me your point of view and I respect it, but understand that I also have mine and I thank you very much for respecting it. In this way, indirectly, you are saying, you are being disrespectful when you give opinions about a decision that I made without consulting you. When they are saying things that are not true and they do it behind your back. It happens to all of us. At work, with friends, with family. You discover that there is someone close or not close to you who's talking about things that are not true who is giving opinions about sensitive and personal topics or who is simply gossiping and telling what's not true. What to do in this case? The first thing I recommend is confront this person forcefully, get ready, take a deep breath and stay calm. Remember, he who owes nothing fears nothing. And with a lot of certainty in private, confront this person respectfully but firmly and say the following. I understand that you have been thinking about my marriage, my weight, my sentimental life, my work, whatever is affecting you. So I recap. I understand that you have been talking or that you have been giving opinions about X or Y subject. And I also understand that the information you're sharing is not accurate. Then, so that you can talk about the subject with who it really corresponds, that is, with me, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about it. So, if there is something that's troubling you about that matter, I would be grateful if you could ask me directly. I will be happy to solve all your concerns. 
Wow, think about how you would feel if you're gossiping about someone and that person confronts you and tells you this. Without a doubt, it leaves you speechless, right? Very well, then use your own words, your own language, and prepare well. But don't forget, try that this confrontation contains these three elements. Number one, I understand that you have been given information that's not true. Number two, I understand that you haven't been talking about that information with whom it really corresponds, that is, with me. Number three, if you have doubts, I will be happy to solve them. So, what do you want to know about my marriage, my work, my weight, whatever is causing you trouble? Whatever is generating conflict and rumors and tell me directly, okay? I will say it again because I know this is very, very frequent. So, the phrase friendly and forcefully would be something like, I understand that you have been talking about X or Y subject. The truth is that I have also been able to verify that you are giving information that is false and that is not accurate, and that you're talking about it with the wrong people. So if you have any doubt about a topic that concerns me, I would appreciate if you ask me directly. I will be happy to answer all your questions. And I prefer that in the future you talk to me about that type of topics instead of doing it with other people. You're being respectful, you're being assertive, and I assure you that you will root out the rumors. Let's go with the next one. When they talk about topics that are uncomfortable or sensitive for you. You're in a social gathering, in a work meeting, in a family reunion, and someone comes in and wraps salt in the wound. For example, you just separated and your cousin, very interested in your personal life, arrives and in front of everyone asks you things like, oh, and how are you dealing with the separation? Is it hard for you getting over the breakup? Or you have just started a new process of weight loss and a friend or a neighbor arrives and says, and how are you doing with the gym? Have you managed to lose those extra pounds? If someone's giving opinions about a topic that's private, personal, or sensitive for you, use the following strategy and say something like, You know what? I'm not willing to discuss this matter. It's very private. Thank you for understanding. It's very, very powerful. I repeat, you know what? I'm not willing to discuss that issue with you, or I'm not willing to discuss that issue in this context or it's a personal issue and I don't want to share. Thank you for understanding. From the start, you cut it out. You don't let them speak and probably that person will say, oh, but how sensitive you are, or oops, I touched a sensitive topic. Stand firm and forcefully. Your argument is extremely valid. It is a subject that I'm not willing to share and I thank you for understanding. Strong and precise. When they are sarcastic and malicious, we can immediately identify malicious comments. The mocking tone betrays who's emitting them. So, in that moment, you must be very prepared, you must be very strong, and I recommend that you respond with two strategies. Number one, if they're attacking, for example, something like your appearance, and they say, oh, but how chubby you are, or who lent you those clothes, your grandmother, or they're telling you, didn't you comb your hair today? The first strategy is to answer that affront with a question. Really? What bothers you about my appearance? This dress? Wow, but I love it, and what don't you like about it? My hair? Well, I feel very good with it today. What would you change? It is about saying it forcefully. Look, the difference is in saying, Really? I thought I looked good. Or, Oh, and what would you do in my case? Just the tone and the lack of confidence are saying, wow, your opinion matters to me, your opinion affected me, and what you just said really hurt me. While if you say, oh yes, and if you were me, what would you change? Here you're not attacking, you're not defending yourself, you're asking. All right, first you're stating, this, I feel very comfortable with this. This dress, I feel very comfortable with it, and I like it. What would you change? Or my hair, well, I feel very comfortable with it. What don't you like about it? You automatically take that person out of their comfort zone because they are probably not expecting that kind of response, so you catch them off guard. Therefore, this person simply drops the subject. 
And strategy number two. In this case, you will be a little more forceful and a little firmer. The first thing I recommend is that you use the surprising element. For example, they're telling you, wow, you really gained weight this holiday season, or wow, that separation didn't sit you well, you look terrible. Take advantage and use an element that takes that person out of context and say something totally different. Attack in the best sense of the word with a positive comment. Say something like, wow, you know what? It seems to me quite the opposite. I think you look great today and I really admire the way you look. Before an attack, the last thing you would expect is that they respond with a positive comment. Now, it's not about saying something you don't feel or saying something sarcastic. Say something honest. If you're like saying something like, wow, it seems to me that you have a nice dress or wow, you know what, I see you looking good. Even though you have probably gained some pounds, you look very handsome or pretty. Or I really like your hair color, how good you look today. When you take the person out of context with a positive and honest comment, you automatically move something that confronts them. I'm attacking you, you're flattering me. And then forcefully you end the conversation with a phrase like, you know what? Look, it seems to me that you look great today and after all I understand your comment, but I also understand that it will always be a lot easier to attack and manifest what we don't like about others instead of looking at what we don't like about ourselves. I prefer that such comments don't continue, but you know what? While you dislike how I look today, it seems to me that you look good. If you were the one who was attacking offensively and they responded in that way, wow, you would remain silent, right? Very good. I know I said it very fast, I will say it in an easier way. So, number one, if they're attacking and offending you, answer with a question. That is the number one strategy. And what bothers you? I feel very comfortable with this, I like it. Strategy number two, use the surprising element sincerely, without being sarcastic and without being reactive. Or, instead of an offense, say something positive. Wow, how beautiful you look today. While you think that I'm overweight, I see you looking good. That dress color you're wearing today suits you very well. And you know what? I appreciate your comment, but I also understand that it will always be easier to criticize and look at what bothers us about others instead of looking at ourselves. Thank you for your comment. While you think I look bad, I see you looking good. And you know what? I prefer that we drop the subject. All right, that's the last key. But first, I'm going to give you an additional tip. Lastly, enjoy life and keep these four recommendations in mind. Number one, people don't see you as you are. They always see you as they are. Hey, but it also applies for you. You don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. So, if you see everything negative, if you're criticizing others, if all the time you're on the defensive, then what does this say about your own perception and about the way in which you relate with yourself? So, calm down. Number one, remember, nobody is really seeing you. We are mirrors of each other. When they're attacking you, it really is because you're moving some fibers that internally causes them great discomfort. Key number two, don't take it personally. Life is a process of constant projection. So, if that person has a dissatisfaction, they had a bad day, they're dissatisfied to see the redundancy with their life and they don't feel satisfied with what they are, it will always be easier to project all that discomfort in others. Don't take it personally, be quiet. Have you not said bad things about someone or have you said a comment out of context and criticized and gossiped about others? Don't take it the wrong way. Key number three. You receive things depending on who they come from, so be careful. It's not about going through life ignoring every comment. Some of these criticisms, although they may not be said with the precise words and although they may be offensive, maybe they have some value and that person is really sharing a genuine concern, even if the way in which they're expressing it is not the most adequate. So, don't dismiss them completely and just be neutral and objective if there's something in that comment that you can rescue. 
And the last thing is an Arabic adage. Remember this. If someone tells you, a person tells you that you have a camel's face, then nothing happens. Hey, but if two or three people tell you that you look like a camel, it's time for you to look in the mirror. What does this mean? If a person is criticizing or attacking you, that's fine. It can be a personal issue they have with you. But if two, three or four people make similar comments, it is a call for self-examination and reflection. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I will love to read your comments. Please like my video so I know that this type of content is generating value to your life and for you to support my work. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm creating material for you all the time. If you want to contact me or my work team, there's a group of psychologists and Reiki practitioners who are willing to accompany you. Or if you want a private psychology session with me, it will also be a pleasure for me to assist you. For my online courses, my virtual training and my face-to-face -face events around the world, be sure to visit marialenavadillo.com. And without further ado, I send you kisses, hugs, blessings, and see you in the next video.